Hey guys, hope everybody's having an awesome Saturday. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow is check-in day. So I'm gonna, one more time, just to include the exact requirements with this post. Um, nobody nails it like the first time, not even the second time. So I expect there's, you know, there'll be some questions and stuff like that, but uh, do get your check-in, uh, preferably tomorrow morning. Some of you guys have already checked in, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, ideally tomorrow morning. Um, so for the check-ins, you're gonna want to do three things. You need to fill out that survey. Uh, the, the survey monkey survey, which I'm going to include a link to in this post. And then you need to do just the measurement sheet, which I will uh, attach or I will pin to this post as well. And then you just have to update your photos in the app. Um, so make sure that you do the survey online, make sure that you do the cover sheet, and then make sure you get your pictures into me. So I just came back, I did my circuits this morning, and I just came back from jujitsu, so still actually covered in sweat. I'm hurting. I'm hurting for certain, but um, it's good. I've really, I've really en enjoyed doing these workouts with you guys. It's been, it's been good. Uh, so, new set of workouts tomorrow. We're gonna get into that a little bit as well. But I just want to bring up a couple of little things that we're gonna talk about today. We're not gonna talk about one thing for any huge length of time. But I, I want to talk about why we do hip thrusts and why we. It's important to train. The booty. I know like some of the exercises, um, you know, can get a little weird for guys who are used to doing nothing but squats. But the truth of the matter is, is for a lot of years, you know, I did a lot of running, I played a lot of rugby, did a lot of kickboxing, and did a lot of squats. And what I found is that I was getting imbalances in my legs. And the reason why is because I had these huge quads, and I had these big hamstrings, and I had no butt. And I, people used to make fun of me. and, and and it was, it's, you know, it was funny. Like, it's a joke. Like, okay, yeah, I don't have an ass. But I think more so than that, I really realized that um, the reason why I was injuring myself and the reason why I was getting muscle imbalances and uh, because I wasn't training my butt. I mean, like, I'm going to do this. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do this. This is like, this is your leg, right? So you got a, got a bunch of quad, you got a big hamstring, and then this, that's your butt. Man, that's a whole lot of muscle. <laughs> that burrito just burped. It's a whole lot of muscle back there. And, uh, you know, women are always kind of training booty gains and chasing booty gains. But booty gains are important for guys too. So uh, it's, it's a huge part of the muscle. It's a huge part of your balance. It's a huge part of your power. And um, that's why I have you guys doing some, some exercises in there that you might traditionally call kind of maybe girly exercises, but the truth is that they matter. They're important. That's what's going to give you strong legs. That's what's going to um, help you balance out your balance out your speed, balance out your power. It's going to make you more functional, um, and it's also going to leave you less disposed to injury. Um, and then girls are going to say, "Man, you've got a great butt," which is whatever, because a lot of you guys, that's going to be your wife. Um, I don't know where I'm going. I'm clutching at straws here. Anyway, booty work for guys. It's important. So uh, even though the exercises might not be exercises that you typically think are important, they really, really are. It's really important for you to be not only strong and not only look good, but a functional human being just for everyday life. Because no sense in looking good if, um, if you know, you're not healthy on the inside and you're constantly being injured. So anyway, I want to talk about a few other things, but that's why we need booty work. So do your booty work. It's important. It really is. Uh, I want to talk about something that has made my life significantly better in the last week or so. This right here. Uh, a lot of you guys have probably tried some of these or taken the time to try some of these products. This is Hershey's sugar-free syrup with five calories for one tablespoon. Genuine chocolate flavor, fat-free and low-calorie, refrigerated after opening. Uh, but what's awesome about this is that it doesn't, I'm not going to lie to you guys and say it tastes like chocolate syrup, but it tastes pretty damn close for something that's five calories. Uh, it's really, really good. You know, if you, if you have a sweet tooth, there's a couple of downfalls. And some of the downfalls are, as we spoke about, there's artificial sweeteners in here. Um, and some of them, you know, maybe not, maybe not the best. Uh, but they've got some erythol, which is a plant-based sweetener, but it does contain um, acetophane, potassium, sucralose, which have some, you know, some things. And, and of course, as we spoke about, those things cause inflammation. So um, this, in a pinch, if your sweet tooth is killing you, um, I recommend doing a protein, a protein brownie mug or something like that. 
which uh, if you guys are looking for recipes, I'm going to make sure I post one in the next couple of days. I'm going to do a protein brownie mug challenge with whoever can make the best one with the lowest calories. But um, get a chance to order some of this. Hershey's sugar-free. You need this in your life. And it's going to stop you from uh, going for those sweets when you're in a really, really tight spot. So just keep that in mind. I wanted to talk today about... Um, Switching cardio up. Yeah, make sure uh, if you guys are getting bored of the cardio, just by all means, do the allocated amount of calorie work however you want. You got to enjoy your cardio. And I think like for so long, I hated my cardio. And now that I do it in jujitsu and I do some rowing, of course, and I do a lot of skipping and stuff like that, um, there's no problem with you subbing out your cardio for something you love. And maybe something you love is something you can do with the kids. Maybe it's a bike ride with the kids for an hour a night, you know, like that. If you're, you know, as long as you're inputting the calories, then it really doesn't matter. Maybe you have a sport that you play. Maybe it's ball hockey. What I don't want you to do is, is go and do something that you love and completely tire yourself out, and then go and do more cardio on top of it because your cortisol levels are going to spike through the roof, and you're gonna, you're gonna not do yourself any justice and not really get any product progress. So, I want to talk today about unilateral training really quickly. Um, some of you guys are probably familiar with this. Some of you guys aren't. Uh, but unilateral training, um, it's funny because when James was here, James, you know what I'm talking about if you're watching, uh, James and I talked about unilateral day, and it's the new unilateral workout. This was actually a, a brilliant idea that James had to market. It's the next Tybo, where you just work one side of your body. Today is left shoulder day. Um, but in all seriousness, of course, that's not a real thing. And, uh, and you know, I'm not going to do that, but I think somehow the right marketing team behind you, maybe you can make that work. Uh, but we do unilateral training, which just refers to uh, doing one arm at a time, you know, uh, coming up in these workouts, you're going to see some unilateral work. And the reason why we do unilateral work is to make sure that we, our, our muscles tend to compensate when we are constantly doing the same exercise. So if you just do nothing but overhead barbells all day, all the time, eventually one of them is going to get stronger. Uh, one of them is going to kind of one of them's gonna pick up the slack for the other one. You're gonna get some imbalances in your muscles, and uh, it's, it can lead to injury. It's gonna probably make you look funny. And if one of your muscles is pushing harder than the other one because it's naturally not as strong, which tends to happen with us, because a lot of us have a dominant hand and a dominant leg. Um, but if that happens and you build up one side, you're more more just predisposed to injury. So we're gonna do a little bit of um, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, sorry, the dog's eating something crazy. Unilateral work, so one side at a time, you know, you know, maybe it's a, a single shoulder press or a single chest press, so look forward to that. And that's only to build not only your core, but to build equivalent strength throughout your body. So once again, you're not just looking better, you're more functional. Um, bands, I got some crazy band exercises in there, guys. I want to talk to anybody who's new here. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> Okay. I don't know how you guys put up with me. Um, anyway, I want to talk to uh, anybody who is new here. Some of these bands exercises are, um, they're going to be a little bit challenging. So if you're, when you're setting up for to do one of these guys, by all means, as, as little weight as possible until you get the right range of motion, just do an extra warm up set, you know, because what you're going to find is that using bands, adds a new layer of resistance to a part of the exercise that you're not necessarily used to. And that's actually going to make you stronger throughout the entire movement. And it's going to help you push through plateaus. But I promise you, it's don't use even a quarter of your normal weight um, when you're setting them up. You know, preferably if you're using a barbell, just try the bar. And then don't get too cocky because uh, the more you get into the exercise, the more fatigue you're going to get and the more you're not used to dealing with a new level of tension at a different part of the exercise. So just please, I caution you, make sure that you're warming up before you're doing any of these. Make sure you're doing your cardio to start and uh, <laughs> make sure that you don't put too much weight on any of these banded exercises until you're comfortable and then build your way up. The best thing that I would suggest is do a starter set with just the bar or the absolute minimal weight so that you understand the motion and slowly work your way up. There are some pyramid sets in, built into these exercises, and pyramid is done when the weight, um, when the amount of reps either increase or decrease. And when the reps are decreasing, I would anticipate that you're slowly lowering the weight. If the reps are the same, keep the reps the same the entire way. And this is known as uh, as pyramid pyramidization of sets. 
and there's two different ways to do it. In these workouts, you're going to see a lot of, uh, of decline pyramid pyramidization, which is actually going to help with your strength. Um, and principally speaking, when you're doing these first couple of sets, you should never ever experience failure on your first sets. In fact, uh, failure may be on your last set when you've got a descending uh, set. So that means like if you're doing 15 reps, then 12 reps, then 10 reps, it's expected that you're going to increase the weight slowly, slowly as you go to the lower increments. Um, and by doing that, you are going to, ooh, that was a pretty big bug. You are going to actually um, make yourself stronger. And because you're making yourself stronger, uh, you're going to be able to do more work and get, get more things done. Sorry, I took a couple of knocks today. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but at least on me, <laughs> it's a couple of really bad knocks at jiu-jitsu. Um, but yeah, uh, pyramidization is done on a descending scale to increase strength. So um, when you get a little bit more advanced, you'll see a lot of guys doing uh, reverse pyramids, which means that you're starting at a lower rep range. Um, and you're pushing out your heavier sets first. And that tends to lead to a couple of things. Uh, number one, injury sometimes. Um, if you're not really careful, you know, if you've got a really heavy set of five, you're not properly warmed up, you're more prone to injury. Um, and then you bounce to an, a set of eight where you gradually lower the weight. So that's why I don't really build a lot of, um, of declining sets into some of these things that we do because these things are meant to fatigue you. They're meant to increase your strength. Um, and then if I just throw in a super set that starts at a high reps with heavy weight, um, then I, I'm leaving you guys more predisposed to injury. So um, anyway, moving on. I wanted to talk to you, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about today was uh, slow reps, right? So I'm all about these slow, nice, slow, controlled reps. If you can't control the motion, you're doing too much weight. And um, it doesn't matter what the guy next to you is doing because the guy next to you is probably about to blow a C4. So just, it's working out is a really, it's a really individual experience and you really, um, just have to do what's right for you and know that by taking your time and building the foundation and doing the slower reps with less weight means that you're building up your stabilizers, you're allowing your joints to get stronger slowly, you're not just loading them with a bunch of weight and you're gonna, in the long run, once again, it comes back to functionality. You're gonna be stronger, you're gonna be less injured. Now, you will see some guys at the gym throwing around weights and some of them are freaking huge. These guys are monsters. And you might say, well, Matt, this guy is like, 300 pounds and he's throwing around weight like crazy. Um, I want to talk to you guys really quickly about something. Those are called cheating sets. I mean, some guys are always cheating and they just have terrible form, which is whatever, teach their own. I really recommend that you slow things down and learn the form because it's going to make you stronger. You're going to get stronger faster than those guys who are throwing around weights. But the guys who are massive bodybuilders who are throwing around weight like crazy, um, those gentlemen are doing what's called cheat reps. And when you get to a certain point of strength and you get to a certain point of development, um, sometimes it is actually an acceptable practice to, you know, swing the arms a little bit on some reps. And the reason for that is you're looking to shock your CNS. You're looking to shock your muscles into experiencing a higher weight. Um, but this isn't something I recommend that we do right here. This, I'm talking about bodybuilders who have trained for, 10 years and are at a peak and compete regularly. I, I don't recommend doing uh, cheat, cheat sets at this point. You know, um, you want to lay a nice foundation. You lay that nice foundation, you're going to get stronger. I promise you, you're going to get stronger. Your muscles are going to build better. You're going to be more, your stabilizer muscles are going to work better. Just really get to that thought of nice, slow, controlled. It shouldn't be too easy. It shouldn't be a walk in the park. You should do a set and you should be tired. Um, but by all means, on those first few sets, you definitely don't want to hit failure. You know, maybe your last set, maybe you hit failure. Um, you know, maybe your two last sets you hit failure because you're trying to push a little bit, but definitely not in your first couple of sets. Those are, are uh, sets where you want to really take your time with the longer, with the, the heavier weight, the heavier rep range, the, long, the larger rep range rather, and, um, and make those work for you to fatigue and to warm up your muscles. So... Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. There's one, one, one exercise in particular, which is a banded uh, barbell press. Please don't do that with any weight on it until you get comfortable. Just put the bands on, loop them in, put them to the side of, of both the barbell, and then just get used to just the motion. I promise you, it's going to be harder than you think. Other than that, guys, uh, yeah, tomorrow check-ins. Make sure you get them to me. The sooner the better because 
I kind of set aside my Sunday where I just I, I go down, I get some food, we come up here and we just work all day and, and we work right into Monday. And um, the later you get them to me, the later I'm gonna be able to get your response because Monday we're gonna take a little bit of time for ourselves and uh, go on a little adventure. So um, I definitely will leave you hanging for too long. It's definitely not intentional, but if you can get them into me tomorrow, it just makes makes it easier for me to get you some feedback back. So, um, and if not, that's cool. Just keep in touch with me. And if you didn't do a good job this week, nobody cares. I don't mean nobody cares. I care, but I just send me your check in anyway because there's things that we can do about it. Like sometimes you're gonna have bad weeks, man. And I'm not your mom. Like I, I want you to do well, but sometimes when it's new to people, you know, there's there's ways around things and there's there's new ways of thinking you know and there's there's ways of making things a little simpler i've had um i've had a lot of clients and uh and I've, I've dealt with a lot of different things so even if you had a bad week get me your check-in i can help other than that guys hope you're having an awesome night and uh we'll talk to you tomorrow take care bye